Okay, we're now recording. Um, and I think maybe we can just start with a, a quick check in, just see how folks are doing. It's been a while since we've seen another and it's always nice to sort of check in. So, um, uh, Carolyn, you want to start? Um, sure, it's another gray, warm winter day. <laughs> That's <laughs> about how I feel. Um, but um, if the, I don't know, you probably heard that the mayor um, in Northampton announced the creation of a new department, um, a climate action and um, project management department. So um, that's exciting on our front. It sort of shifts where Chris's former position was located from central services and facilities to this new department. And then there would be a department director in addition to an energy officer. Um, and then it's tied in with procurement. So I think it has some really good potential um, and sort of shows that we really need to, a lot of this is gonna be project-based and grant you know, acquisition and um, implementation based um, in terms of our efforts to move us towards our climate goals. Um, so that's going to be um, a new and um, exciting time for us. <laughs> Are you going to be involved with that work as well? I mean, I know you're the planner, so obviously, you know, or you're the yeah. director. So, I mean, it seems like you would be involved, but I assume maybe you're sort of in the development, but maybe they're in the implementation side. Is that how it's yeah. going to work? Is that what you're saying? Yeah. Yep. That's great. Yeah. So we're going to work very closely. Um, I mean, the this the idea is that the this department is sort of um, will work across departments, um, mm -hmm. but obviously with us being in the planning seat and the you know um, with all the identified strategies in our climate. Um, our sustainable Northampton and resilience and regeneration plan, that's going to be, you know, a large part of the focus for this department. And will you, um, oh, shoot, I just had a question and now I just lost it. Um, oh, I forgot. Oh, well, <laughs> I lost it. <laughs> Adele or Andre, do you have questions for Carolyn about that new department? Yeah, I'm just so jealous. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, I know what the question was. Carolyn, are you going to be? Um, are you going to be the uh, still the Office of Planning and Sustainability? Will that still remain? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, that's great. It's changing in our end. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Cool. Um, and so, um, who just joined us on the phone? Is that you, Tom? Uh, this is Darcy. Can you hear oh. me? Hi, Darcy. Yes, we can. Okay. Great. We're just doing some check-ins. Um, and um, just kind of as an FYI, um, Andra, I did um, put in for an energy officer. I actually did put that in in a proposed budget. So I don't know if it'll happen, but I did add it. Um, Excellent. So energy officer and um, administrative support are the two positions that I requested for 2024, FYI 20, uh, FY24. So we'll see, <laughs> you know, <laughs> fingers crossed, who knows. Um, so Adele, would you like to go next? Sure, <clears throat> I'm, uh, I'm in Florida and it's um, quite warm down here. And um, um, <clears throat> I guess uh, my, my question for Carolyn was the same as, as one of yours, so I don't have any other questions. And um, I'm gonna be switching over to a phone um, midstream. So okay. just FYI. Okay, no, nope. good to know. Um, Andra? Yeah, I'm staying on uh, no video because I have COVID. Oh. Not you know, doing very much. <laughs> not feeling so great. Yeah, but so sorry. It's not, it's not so bad. Is this your first time? It is. I wasn't sure those little tests worked. 
Yeah. <laughs> They do. Yeah. <laughs> Although a friend, somebody, a friend had um, one of their children had tested negative and then later tested positive. Like they had gone to the doctor, think for something mm. else. And then it turned out that when they tested them. with oh. the Oh yeah. You have to do serial tests. You, you can't trust one. No. So. Yeah. Hi, Tom. Um, Hello. Sorry, I'm late. I, my boss invariably schedules me when we're supposed to be on this call, but I moved him <laughs> back and still went over a little bit, but hello, everyone. Hi, Tom. We're just glad you're with us. So that's, that's great. Um, we're just doing a little bit of a check-in of Darcy's next, and then we'll go to you. Um, Darcy, you want to check in? Sure. Um, uh, not that much report. I, I'm on the phone because I, um, I, I also need to leave fairly shortly and I can just talk while I'm on the in the car um, because my my son is home for the weekend so that's really that's really nice nice well that's exciting happy for you <laughs> thank you and Tom uh is this a check-in just on life yeah just our you know where we're at it's been a while well, so I got a nice black eye how's oh, that see yikes that. wow can't miss that what happened? I I live up on the hill in Pelham and there's beautiful trails and I went for my normal jog and stepped on a piece of land that had nothing underneath it and sunk into a hole and smacked <gasps> my head in the ground and Oh my goodness. Fortunately, uh <laughs> no no greater damage than uh I, I mean I I didn't like black God. out or have a concussion or anything like that. So it could have been way worse. So oh. I was checking in with mother earth. How's that? Uh <laughs> You were become, yeah. Well, and um, is that your glasses ring? Did you, your glasses smash on your no, face? No, I, I, so I hit my head and, and I think I, I, I don't think I hit it that hard. I think I hit it on a, uh, like a stick that was coming out of the ground and it, so this is all blood that's just drained into my eye from, so I'm like, I got to go to an event last next week. I'm mm -hmm. constantly massaging it. And anyhow, I don't know if that's what you were hoping to hear or looking to hear, uh, Stephanie, but that's my immediate check-in. Um, you know, other than that, um, just uh, uh, eager to keep this, uh, this effort moving forward. And I'm understanding that our good DPU is, got multi-year timelines to get these things approved so i'm yeah open to expedition yes well we are that's what we we will be discussing that today obviously so um thanks so um i'm just happy to be here with you all um as i said you know i don't know what's going to happen with our budget but um the exciting thing now as a director is that i get to make proposals and so i made a proposal of creating a new energy officer position and a an administrative support for the sustainability department. I am the department of one currently. So, um, and not the only one, there's others that are departments of one as well, but hopefully um, I'm, I'm hoping that those will get approved. And I think the good thing for us is when Northampton does something like they're doing, then, you know, it does, you know, help. <laughs> so, you know, and I think we were, I was certainly well aware of those changes. So I think, um, you know, hopefully that will translate to uh, the addition of some new staffing and being able to move things forward here too. So um, again, thank you all for being here. We're here till 11 today, but I know some of you have to drop out. So whatever you've got to do, um, it's really just the three communities that constitute the quorum. So as long as the three of us here, or well, two of the three of us are here, we can continue the meeting. So, um, but um, the first thing I guess I wanted to um, ask is if everyone had reviewed the minutes that I had sent. Um, we're using the ones that the student had done as kind of the official minutes, just because I think for her time, I want to acknowledge the last two sets of minutes that I had sent um, that she had worked on. And we have Darcy's I sent last night, just we'll keep those as the notes, but um, uh, oh, actually, and is anyone available to do minutes today? And Darcy, you're driving, so I don't think you can do that. Can anyone do minutes today? I cannot okay. because I will be switching over to a car also. Okay, and Andre, you have COVID. So um, I guess that leaves 
the three of us. I, I mean, well, I could. I'll, I'll try to do it. I'm terrible at it, but I'll, I'll take some notes. Okay. Sure. That's yeah. okay. I always watch the videos and I can fill in gaps. Right. So just um, if you, you know, if you could sort of give me a frame to work with, I can fill in what we need to if necessary. Sounds good. Um, Stephanie, by the yep. way, did you start recording? I did. Yeah, we're recording. Oh, okay. right. Yeah, we've been recording yep. for a bit now. Can Was there I a question? A question about the agenda? Yep. Um, uh, just wondering about the agenda item, the Amherst Solar Assessment. If if that could be at the end, is Dwayne coming, or are you going to do that, or um, what? I think um, it was just going to be just sort of an update of where that is. Um, oh, so not. Uh, I, I don't. Dwayne's not coming. Oh. Okay, I was just going to ask. It's, it is on the end of the agenda already, so that would be good for me because I don't probably don't have to be there for that. Yeah, and it's just an update on sort of what the process is, where we are. Um, I'm the project manager, so I didn't feel the need to bring Dwayne into yet another um, meeting for his time. I mean, if you wanted to talk more about the solar analysis he's doing for the ECAC, that's something different. But the solar assessment in and of itself, I was just going to give an overview okay. and, and what's okay. happening with the solar bylaw working group. Okay. So if you want more and want me to bring Dwayne in for the next meeting, I can ask him. But I just kind of feel like he's a bit tapped out with ECAC and solar bylaw and being the chair he puts in, as you know, additional time. So I'm just trying to be yeah. respectful of his time. I know. So, Actually, we could probably just share the link where he presented to the ECAC, and then he wouldn't have to. <laughs> yeah, you know, exactly. That, that would give people a lot of details. Yeah, but I can give you the overview of what's happening. But the analysis piece, I think, is what you're probably more looking for, and he definitely could handle that. You know, or we could cover that through the link to the ECAC meeting, as you said. So, I'll I'll do that sure. at the end. So. Um, I just wanted to, uh, so I wanted to just start with the minutes if we can get those out of the way. Did people already take a look at them um, and have any comments, yes. changes, edits are okay? If okay, then either Carolyn or Tom, one of you could make a motion. Um, we'll start with the minutes of 9622. Uh, Mr. first. I, I don't know which one Seconded. it was. <laughs> oh, oh, sorry. What was that, Andra? Oh, um, I, I read through both of them quickly, and so I don't know which it was, but um, I, I wasn't positive that um, VGE and um, uh, JPE, JPA were always used, right? It, very confusing thing, but I do think for the official minutes, we need to make sure they're right. Okay, I will go through those more carefully. Um, I just, I kind of skimmed it. So I'll go through and um, and make sure that, that that's accurate. I'll look through both sets of minutes. I'm making a note for myself. Okay, about the minutes of 9622, Carolyn or Tom? Uh, didn't Carolyn just mo make a motion for that? I, yeah, I'm sorry, I was yeah. getting comments from okay. Andrew. Tom seconded. That's fine. <laughs> and I seconded it. Okay. And our vote, Carolyn? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'm a yes. Okay, so the minutes of 9 6 are approved. Um, and then the minutes of 11 18 22. Move to approve. Uh, okay. I will second that. Okay. And a voice vote, Carolyn. Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'm also a yes, so the minutes of 1118 are approved. Unanimously. Unanimously. <laughs> okay. Um, all right, so moving right along. So um, this is probably, this conversation is gonna cover a lot of things. Um, so the next agenda item is updates on the JPA signatures. 
Um, and this is probably going to move us right into our next agenda item, which is the CCA. So um, Carolyn and I at one point had touched base about the JPA um, signatures. Um, Carolyn had pointed out that we had some blank spots in the document that required um, that required us to sort of put in some numbers for the the blank was particularly the amount that towns would commit to um, supporting financially supporting the JP um, the JPE and I know that Chris had put together a document but our executives hadn't really looked at it and it suddenly started to become clear to us that this was going to be more complicated because um, it wasn't just a straightforward thing, at least for us to just say, yes, we can um, sign without examining that amount and actually what that's going to mean going forward as well in the next couple of years. So um, we reached out to Paul Gromer and had a meeting with him last week to talk about could we actually move forward with the CCA under the MOU? And still continue to work on developing a JPE, but like, can we just get this thing in the in the pipeline now? And I know Paul had talked to us before about it would be easier to do it with a JPE, but he seemed to think this time he said, you know, it would be it would be an administrative change. Um, he said, first of all, and he said a couple of things. First of all, he said the timeline now for the DP you turnaround for reviewing these CCAs is now is gone into two years. It's taking up to two years for some. And so um, he said, you know, that that in and of itself is sort of, you know, kind of a, even though the DPU keeps promising that they're going to streamline it, they haven't yet. So right now it's up to two years. So there's that. So what that means is that we could, um, we could still work on getting the JPE up and running while that's happening. And then if that happens before the approval, he can just amend, he can make an amendment while it's being reviewed. Um, and so that could happen sort of in that process. So if it happens within that, if it's a two year time frame, it can happen then. He said, if the CCA contract or um, application is approved by DPU and then we become a JPE. He said that's really kind of just an, an administrative change. It's not a very long, it's not nearly as long a process of um, amending. He said that's much quicker to do. So um, it just seemed to us at this point that it made sense to go forward with the MOU because we can do that faster. Um, also, Paul took a look at our current contract compared to the Cape Light uh, Compacts um, MOU to sort of look at the language and see if it were possible for us to move forward under our MOU the way it is currently written. And he seems to think that it is fine that we could actually move forward with, with it under the current language. So just wanted to give you all sort of that update and sort of weigh in on people's um, feelings about this. Tom and I also spoke, and I think the three communities feel like this is probably the best way to go because we can start, we can just sort of start. <laughs> we can start with our public outreach. We can get things moving forward and we can still work on the JPE, but maybe we just don't do it right now. Um, well, I'm really glad uh, that you had this conversation because uh, I was going to suggest exactly the same thing. That's oh, yay. Really good news. <laughs> That's good. I was, I'll be honest that I was really nervous <laughs> today sort of coming with this because I thought it's not that we're abandoning it. It's just that it's just going to take, it's just more complicated than it seems because even though it's just, well, signing the contract and the JPE exists, there's so much more with like, we have to secure legal counsel and we, you know, all those other little pieces they're not they're time consuming and they're going to require like a whole new structure whereas this way we can kiss we can sort of continue the way we are too I mean in some ways I think it's good because we can kind of keep our advisory group format for a while um, until that really is up and running so I think in some ways I feel more um, confident and comfortable to move it forward this way. Um, I think the programming isn't lost. I think we know we want to do programming. Um, I will say that Amherst is, uh, we're putting together an RFQ. It's almost done. I just want to have a ECAC member take a look at it one last time. But um, we're going to be launching a heat pump program 
within our community. So I know that, you know, there's going to be funding more IRA funding down the pike that we might be able to tap into and we might be able to do other things as well. Um, and I think waiting for the JPE to get up and running and waiting for an adder that may or may not even be able to contribute towards programming, it's, a, it's still such an unknown. I think it just makes more sense to do this this way. So um, Adele, I'm glad you're on board, but Andra and Darcy, do you want to weigh in? Do it, do it, do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, that's awesome. Um, great. Yeah, I I guess um, I, I'm i wondering what it means to what this group is going to be doing moving forward um, if we're not, if we don't, I mean, we were, we were kind of assuming we'll have a JPE um, and we can start work, work on the CCA business plan. We can do all the different things. I'm just, <laughs> I, the, there's so much waiting that goes on and I'm worried that this just means it'll get put on the back burner again and we'll, we'll wait another year. Um, <laughs> I, don't I don't think so, I, Darcy, because there's going to be a whole period of time where the, the CCA, you know, application is going to be under review and I think there's that, you know, that time is going to allow us an opportunity to just focus on the JPE, really. I mean, the community outreach, you know, we're going to be, you know, there's going to be that piece. There's certainly that to do as well. I, I just don't, it, it's going to take longer to get the CCA up and running if we're work if we're just waiting on the JPE to come together. I just think it's going to take, I think it's more complicated um, than you know than we sort of anticipated and i just think at least if we get the cca up and running you know it won't be hard to amend the contract to make it a jpe when that happens and it we gives us some to, time we just need to keep the pressure on the jpa development and um you know i i know that there's a huge cry right now in in the Northampton circles anyway, for more information about the CCA. And so we really need to start doing outreach as quickly as possible. Yeah, and that's, go ahead, Carolyn. Sorry, I, I was just gonna say, I, I, I also wanna note that there's a lot of work. I mean, there is work to be done even to set up the CCA. Mm -hmm. So after it's submitted to the DPU, there's still structure that needs to be defined for the CCA and the CCA can continue on. There's no requirement that we create a JPE, um, but that could also be a piece of the furthering, for, you know, further the conversation about what that would look like. The, the piece, uh, the issue would be, you know, the other piece of this is if it takes up to two years, a year and a half to two years for the CCA to be finalized by the DPU, um, we don't want to have this financial and time resource intensive constraint on the municipalities um, when there's nothing coming in, as, as um, Stephanie alluded to, that if there's no... Um, adder coming in to support staff for the for AJPE. Um, there's that piece. But the other piece is, you know, there, there's just this whole CCA thing under the MOU can continue along and develop that structure for what's, you know, the rollout. As soon as DPU approves, you know, we'll have to have the whole mailing and the public outreach relative to that. So this group can be part of that. But I think, um, you know, in terms of getting public information out, Adele, that you just mentioned about um, people wanting to know what the status is. I mean, that's sort of part of the next steps that we can talk about. Um, yeah, exactly. From going on from here. I, I do want to say, um, I think there's still confusion about what the, um, JPE is going to, uh, how it's going to function 
Um, and what else it's going to do besides running the CCA. And um, that is a different conversation, it happens to be the same people, but does not have to be in this meeting. And just for clarity, shouldn't be discussed in this meeting. Yeah, I was just going to like, I, that's why I know Adele wanted to sort of remove that from the agenda, but I wanted to sort of talk about um, just maybe like scheduling that next step JPE meeting at another different time, um, you know, and just sort of at least having a, a next a next target for that, um, at least identifying that. But I I don't think we need to get into the details. I agree. Today, I think today I we need to focus on the CCA. Sorry, go ahead, Darcy. Um, I'm just a little. I, I'm. I know that you listed the things that would need to be done. Um, but my understanding was that um, once the documents were signed, the first thing would be that a board would be appointed, and that the board would then do all of those tasks. And that, that is actually listed in the list that we have of, you know, the startup list. Yeah, I, 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 that's, that's just what I don't want us to talk about now. I had the same thought and we need a home meeting, just, you know, the JPE, JPA group to talk about that. It doesn't and fit in this meeting about the CCA. Yeah, and the problem with the, that is also the financial piece. And we don't, you know, yes, we have, and just so you are all aware, we have $29,300 available in the account um, to sort of help towards that effort. Um, but that's not a lot and won't get us that far, to be honest. So um, the question then is then what? And I don't, I, and Pelham has said right from the beginning that they won't be financially contributing to this, that they can't necessarily. So. Um, I think that's why I don't, I, and I agree, I don't want to get into this big discussion. It's a challenge and I don't want to be working in circles when we could be moving the CCA forward more productively right now. So are we sort of in agreement that we can discuss the CCA next steps? Because there's a couple of things, um, to do, I just wanted to share the final logo choice just as a start. Um, we could start with that. So, and then we can talk about the public outreach piece, which has to, which actually does has to start sooner than later. So, are folks good with that? Yes. Yep. Okay. I am now on my phone and um, I probably need to get entered into the meeting. I saw I'm moving you now. Whoops. Uh, hmm. Well, it's not allowing me to. Okay. All right. You should be all set, Adele. Can you unmute? Do star six to unmute. How about now? Yep, now we can hear you. Hey, hey. All right, just want to make sure Thank that you. you're there. Okay. All right. Um, so bear with me a moment. And I will share my screen. So I just wanted to go over the logos. So this was the one that we um, had the most votes for. Um, the other, I guess, runners up, I'll say, were this first one. And then this one as well. So I just want to ensure that, let's see. Yep, I think those were the only the top three. So I just want to ensure that people um, feel okay with this as the final logo. 
Um, I can't see it, but is that was that the oh, first one? It's it was your yeah, it was yours, your first choice, Adele. Oh, well then I guess I'm happy with it. Yeah. <laughs> Andra was okay with it. Um Chris and you and Darcy made this your first choice. Um and ironically, um none of the communities <laughs> voted on this one, but I, I mean I'm fine with it. I don't I don't have a problem with this. I don't feel that strongly about this not being adequate for our purposes. Um Tom or Carolyn, do you because I think we have to be the ones yeah. that sort of have the official vote. So yeah, I mean, I wouldn't not going to die on my sword for any of these. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel. So, and Tom, are you you're okay as well? Absolutely. Okay, so um, do one of you want to make a motion to choose this second um, logo? I'll make the motion, Carolyn. You've been carrying the motion so far. You can second it. <laughs> I'll second it. <laughs> okay. The and one with four we, votes. Yes. How are we identifying this logo? Um, just say the one that was displayed with the most votes, and I'll tweak it if I have to. But okay. I think we just say the one with the most votes. Got it. Carolyn seconds. OK. And voice vote, Carolyn? Yes. Tom? Yes. And I'm a yes. So yay, we have a logo. Am I muted Beautiful. or unmuted? Unmuted. What? You're unmuted. <laughs> okay, I'm gonna mute just so that you can't hear part of Okay. All right, I'm stopping the share there. All right. Great. So we have our logo choice. Um so our uh CCA next steps um i think that obviously as we said the big thing is the outreach and um what carolyn and i and, and carolyn i guess why don't you just you know say what your suggestions were to me and recommendations to me to the group because yeah. i don't have your email and i think they sound great so okay sure so we had um you know as stephanie mentioned we um, had a conversation with Paul Gromer, and he indicated that there were just some tweaks that need to be made to the CCA, and it wouldn't take him much time at all um, to get that ready. There are also some, um, there. Uh, oh, there's a range of public um, documents that are um, need to be part of the public information, 30-day um, public information gathering um, feedback um timeline and some of those documents have to be tweaked as well um really they're sort of administrative tweaks that i think stephanie and i can work on to to fix and send to paul so that they are finalized but those have to be finalized for um to open the public session um and it's really a matter of how you know the public the letters are organized and if we want the if we're going by an MOU, then we probably want the three communities up there and so it's not really anything um, of substance, I would say. So I think that Stephanie and I can work on getting those to Paul and with a target date of perhaps the end of February of getting um, that finalized so that we can open the 30 day comment period early March, maybe let's say March 6. And then within that 30 day public comment period, we need to have um, one um, public forum that can be on Zoom. So we were thinking that um, we could open the public comment period. We don't have to have the specific date yet for that um, Zoom meeting, but we can work on finding a date that obviously all the chief executives are available, Paul's available, and then the, the three communities at least are available. And that would sort of dictate when that Zoom public forum would be. And Paul would be essentially running that, but it want, you know we would need to all be there to um, provide that community voice. Um, and then once 
once the 30 day, so we would do that sometime in that window, let's say March to April is 30 days, then at the close of that 30 day, that's when the um, submission can go to DPU. So if that, um, you know, I think if we can get all that finished, we could potentially be submitting to DPU early April, early to mid April. Okay. Are folks, okay, and I should be clear that um, uh, leading, obviously leading that community discussion would be Paul Gromer and folks from his team, not Paul Bachelman, just in case there might have been right. some slight right. confusion, <laughs> which Paul. Um, yeah. So are folks uh, okay with that timeline? It's probably the fastest we can do this, okay to be with, honest. I, I'm okay with the timeline. Um, I, I do think that it's important for the three communities to have a more active role in the actual presentation so that it doesn't look like some external um, contractor doing, uh, making the presentation alone. Oh, no, well, the three, that's why Carolyn said we would have the, hopefully the three executives of each community um, would be part of that meeting so that they could be there to answer questions as well. So there'd be a brief, you know, I think how these things have typically gone, at least for us, is that, you know, if you have a consultant come in, they'll kind of do their, their sort of general presentation, but then the Q&A is handled by the communities. Or even, you know, I can imagine where the introduction to the public forum is by the three chief executives right, and then right. it's handed over to the consultants. So, yeah. um, and then it probably circles back um, as yeah. well at the end. And Amherst is likely to host. So we would give each, you know, each community an opportunity to sort of do their, introduce their towns. So are we think in one meeting or three meetings? One meeting. Okay. Paul recommended one meeting, one big meeting. Okay. Um, in part because we are doing this together as three communities. So it kind of makes mm -hmm. sense to sort of have that unity right from the outset yeah. and sort of, um, you know, to sort of um, show that it's not just each community working on its own. We are really are working together. Um, so that seemed to be a, a logical reason to sort of do it as one. But yeah, we'll tell, I mean, there's time to, to work what that will look like too and who's going to be doing what. So, and if you all want to sort of weigh in and how you think it'll be most helpful to have our leaders engage, we'd certainly be open to suggestions for that piece. So, and there's time, so. Yeah. The other thing I just realized is we really should try to do that meeting in March because yeah. the, the um, special legislation to allow public forums on Zoom um, is up for, um, you know, uh, retraction in April. And even though the DPDU allows you to do it on Zoom, I wouldn't want to take any chances that if all of that special legislation. For, no, I, yeah, I agree. Yeah. Because it would be much harder to try to convene all <laughs> executives mm -hmm. from the three communities at one time in a physical location. Yes. Remember when you had to do that. Yeah, well, it may not be too far away again. I don't know. <laughs> I so. am very excited that we could actually move forward this way. Great. Excellent. Um, all right, so there are, um, I, I, you know, I gave us two hours. We might be able to actually be doing, do this in an hour because um, I think that's the biggest piece. And I think that's where, you know, we could certainly, um, you know, once we get materials finalized too, where you all want to sort of help out with spreading the word um, in, your, in your sort of other CCA advisory group um community or community advisory group circles um that would be really helpful question uh, 
I have a question. Yep. The, um, the Northampton neighbors, for example, uh, are one group that's really eager to hear about the CCA. Uh, shall we just keep putting them off until until the launch, or is it okay to have to launch any information at all? Um, well, we're saying the official launch would be at the beginning of March. So um, I I think if we started having materials ready, you know, I think let's just, um, I, I think I, I just want to check all of this with Paul Gromer first, just to make sure it's, it's okay that we do that. But um, I think sort of in a more general information way, you could probably start sharing information, but um, the specifics of the program, I think we would have to wait a little bit, probably to the official launch. Yeah, I mean, the official launch, you're supposed to have all these documents available on yeah. the start date of, you know, there's a 30 day window. And so your documents have to be ready on that first day. So, you know, you could tell people we're going to start the public comment period, we think sometime in March, but it's not really official till we have the website yep. all, um, you know, populated with all the documents that we can say that's the start of the public comment period. Got it, thank you. And also Thanks. even within that time, it gives Paul time to, um, you know, any tweaks that he might have to do to the CCA draft, um, the final draft, it gives him time to do that because he really doesn't need to submit it until the end of that comment period. So he can be, you know, we can, if we need to get signatures or whatever we need to do um, with the MOU, that can all happen like now. And this it month. gives us a little time. Yeah. yeah, this month. And even into March if we had to, but I think we'll probably get it signed before then if um if we have to with the amendments so um so let's see our um i mean the jpe next steps we could schedule a meeting to discuss the jpe um you know just because i have people here and it's easier to find a time um, and I know that Northampton Chris was kind of leading that piece, Carolyn, just so you know. Um, and I I don't want to just suddenly thrust it upon you because I know you've got um, a heavy load right now. So I'm happy to sort of um, facilitate that piece for now oh. as well. Ah. Oop. <laughs> <laughs> that didn't sound good. <laughs> I mean, I guess I would suggest that maybe our focus until we get the public meeting up and running that our focus should be on that okay. so um i would suggest that maybe after we launch the public comment period that it we could circle back and do um a convening about what steps if any we want to pursue with the jpe at this given time so i guess that's um, what, what i'm saying though would be What's yeah. the date? I'm just trying to find a date. To I do yeah, just yeah. that. I'm just thinking well. Then I would it. just recommend that it would be sometime in March, <laughs> but <laughs> not before we do the public. You know, because I think your and my effort should be mm -hmm. to get these documents um, ready for public comment. Yep, I I agree. Whenever so would that imply? Yeah, go ahead. Schedule. Whenever it is that we schedule the JPE discussion. Um, I think we need to designate a special time, uh, either before or after the uh, Valley Green Energy Working Group, so that it's very clear that it's distinct. That they're, mm -hmm. they're different topics. Yeah, agreed. And I, yeah, I, I don't know that I like the idea of having them one after the other, personally. I, I also just <clears throat> want to voice um, support for the idea of Northampton leading on the um, JPA and JPE. Just we've we've had um, a lot to hold in Amherst with very little, you know, uh, 
capacity over these years and it's gone very slowly. And the, I know us community members are, are anxious to see Northampton take on a piece of this. Um, I do want to say that some of the slowness, I, I'm going to try not to take that too personally. <laughs> um, but I think part yeah, of that yeah. is... Yeah, we, we know I, it's other, you know, positions. It's not you, Stephanie. No, I know. Um, I'm just saying that I think, you know, part of that, I yeah. I mean, I just am sensitive to the fact that Carolyn is in a new, you know, a new role. Um, and is sort of juggling a, a lot more on her plate right now. And I don't think Chris had quite that same load. I mean, he was busy, there's no question, but I think I, I feel kind of sensitive and um, to what Carolyn is, you know, her position. And I know I'm a new department head too, but I'm, I don't have staff, Carolyn has staff. I don't, um, and that makes a difference, you know? So maybe just initially, let's just, for now, I, I mean, what I'm really hoping, honestly, is that we can sort of get to, like, we can sort of move this along as much as we can now, but, you know, at some point, I'm really hoping we can bring in an administrative support person to sort of take that on. And I don't know at what point that can happen, but You know, yeah, maybe I mean, once you have an energy officer or we have an energy officer, then, you know, and they've got those positions posted. So, you know, that might be the time. Yeah. I mean, I sense? think we're going to have more capacity too going forward. So um, I think the combined capacities, we should be able to um, move this along. Is, is, uh, our do these positions have um, as part of their job description um, some some at involvement in this effort? You know, I, go ahead. Oh, sorry. It, no, I mean, job descriptions are are broad. Um, right. I mean, we're this part of this overall this project is not uh, um, the goal isn't the project itself. The goal is to meet our communities and our regional you know, sure. objectives. So I wouldn't, but I guess, I mean, it could potentially be part of that, but we also don't know what that is. So I think in the interim, the position, you know, the energy officer position and uh, this new climate action department is going to be, you know, whatever it takes on all different fronts it's not just about energy, it's about land use, it's about transportation. So all of sure. those things are gonna be in the mix for the position. Yeah. Yeah, I just I just didn't want us to, you know, be you know, anticipating this kind of support if it's if if it's outside of the scope of what these people are being brought on to do. But it, it sounds like yeah. in a this would fall under the umbrella. Yeah, and I guess my thinking as well is that who knows what's going to happen if we are going to decide to pursue the JP um, that the creating um, the um, organization itself, but um, you know there would have to be staff support at some level from right. each of our communities to that. But it's not going to be the only thing that that staff person is charged with supporting. Right. Um, and I, I had a very similar vision for us in getting an energy officer that they would perhaps take on this piece. Um, you know, but it, it's not, I mean, it was sort of, it's kind of proposed, but it's not a job description. You know, there's no specific, like this person will do X, Y, Z. It's just kind of, an idea of in the realm of all that we're doing, would this person have some role in this? And I was hopeful that that could be the case. So, um, all right, so I'm just gonna, um, rather than just come up with the date in March right now, can I just maybe um, send out some options to folks when I sort of have a clearer idea of what our calendar is for some of the outreach that we need to do? Are sure, folks that okay with that? Mm -hmm. Okay. 
All right. Great. Um, all right, so I'm actually, uh, this brings me to the MR solar assessment. So I can very quickly um, tell you that we um, are looking at developing a solar bylaw in Amherst um, for large scale ground mounted solar. And we wanted to do a solar assessment, which the Energy and Climate Action Committee has wanted to do anyway, even sort of outside of just the, the development of a solar bylaw, but just as a way to sort of look at where is solar even feasible at this point in Amherst? Where could we possibly put it? And um, so we're doing a, a community-wide um, investigation of available space, and we're looking at everything. We're looking at, um, I should say, everything except the um, institutions of higher education's land holdings. We're not looking at theirs. Um, in part because they're already kind of doing their own work with that. So we're looking at like outside of the institutions of higher education, which are kind of our large institutions and our large businesses, if you will, in town, um, where is solar feasible? So it's looking at a community, a, you know, community-wide scale. Um, it's looking at private land, all land, um, but then it's uh, got sort of layers of like what's in you know endangered species habitat that won't allow the development of solar. So sort of those things that kind of prohibit solar from being developed are kind of identified on that you know, on that map um, in that mapping exercise. And then we're looking at you know where is it feasible? How close is it to transmission lines? Um, so some of those things have been included in sort of the analysis of developing some kind of a, a solar mapping tool. Um, and the idea is that this would be kind of an interactive tool that a resident might be able to access if they're interested in putting solar um, in their backyard or on their house, maybe they'll want to take a look at this interactive map and be able to sort of determine if it's something they could potentially do or not you know, or not, or it would just lead to more investigation. Um, so we're working with uh, GZA, Geo Environmental um, Consulting Services. Uh, they've been incredible, really wonderful. We're working specifically with Adrian Dunk, and she has a um, an IT specialist who's been meeting with our IT specialist. We have a technical team that's met a few times to sort of talk about the development of that mapping exercise, and that's almost the so the solar assessment piece itself um, is nearly done with our final draft um, it's not quite there yet but uh, we'll be able to actually unveil that sooner than later so that's kind of exciting that we've gotten to that point and then um, that is just a tool that will be available to the solar bylaw working group in their development of the solar bylaw but again it's really not meant to sort of dictate exactly where it can go it's just saying where does it look to be feasible but it it still is going to require more um, project by project direct analysis of the siting so it's just kind of to give us a general idea um, one thing that the Energy and Climate Action Committee is doing, uh, Dwayne Breger and Steve Roof have been kind of working somewhat together on taking a look at what is they're calling the fair share of Amherst's contribution to solar development in the state, given the state's um, climate action goals. And so they've done kind of a a very in-depth analysis and I do have that is recorded that meeting was recorded so I can send the link to that to everybody um you know Dwayne did quite a bit of analysis and um it's not quite fully completed yet well actually that's not true they did come up with a recommendation at their last meeting so I can I can send the you know that portion of the meeting um I can let you know where that was and you all could take a look at it if you're interested so I can send that out Thank you. Let me just make a note for myself. Okay. Um, so does anybody have any questions about what we're doing on our solar assessment or the development of our solar bylaw? Well, and Carolyn, <laughs> Andrew, go ahead. Oh, um, I used to own um, um, agricultural land um, and 
one thing that we <clears throat> looked into was the possibility of putting solar around the edges <clears throat> of it. And um, at that time, that wasn't possible, but it could be, should, you know, state priorities change. <clears throat> is, is something like that, creative solutions, um, a part of the assessment? Yeah, well, not not the assessment so much. Um, it's it's. Um, I think they they didn't sort of like prohibit aglands. It's just like, and I forget what sort of the layer analysis was for aglands, but um, yeah, I mean nothing is kind of you know forested areas aren't off the table, and agland isn't holistically off the table. It's again like where could you potentially put it on ag land? Um, so yeah, all, I mean, the assessment is just about, it's literally just sort of a scientific look at sort of physically, where could it go? The bylaw is more about creating those opportunities for, you know, where it could potentially be zoned, where it would work. So it's just a tool to sort of help them see like, oh, on this ag land, there's a potential here. So if we could potentially put it on this one, we want to protect the soils. So how do we, you know, how do we maybe uh, write a bylaw that protects ag soils, but allows for some solar development? Those are the kinds of questions. And they haven't really gotten into the meat of that discussion yet, but I, it's coming. Is, is this enough? I'm wondering what the budget is for the uh, assessment part. So um, I think the solar assessment itself, uh, we had we had a budget of, I think, 100,000, but it came in around 50,000-ish, um, maybe a bit more. And um, But we're also using some of those funds for the solar bylaw for a peer review. So um, it wasn't all just for the assessment, but the but the assessment, I think our final cost was around 50,000 ish. Thank you. Sure. Is this an outgrowth of the uh, all the kerfuffle over cows, coals? I, I wouldn't say specifically an outgrowth of that, because I know that the ECAC has wanted to do a solar assessment for some time. So, mm -hmm. but I think the need for a solar bylaw, um, it wasn't just because of that one project, but it sort of became clear that we, um, if, if larger scale projects are coming down the pike, which they may be, we need to sort of have a way to um, address them in our zoning, which didn't specifically speak to that scale of solar development. Great, thanks. Okay, well, are there any other questions? Um, we don't have any public. Adele is showing up as our public right now. <laughs> so um, <laughs> we don't have any public for public comment. So um, our next meeting, we could, um, so we could schedule another meeting in two weeks, which is what we've been, that's kind of been our, our schedule for this group. And we could maybe, Carolyn and I, if we can share some of the materials that we worked on, um, you know, with the, with the outreach materials, we could share those with you at that time. I'm gonna be um, out of the office on the 24th. Oh. Okay. All righty. Um, is there, oh God. sorry, I'm really frustrated about not being able to access my work email right now. Um, let's see. So uh, the following week would be March 3rd, or we could do the I mean, I think next week would be too too early, or we could do a different day that week, or we could do Monday the twenty seventh. Would a Monday be not work for people? We could do Monday. I, I can I'm do out. Monday. I'm sorry. About the entire week of February vacation. Okay. 
I'm sorry, someone, Darcy, was that you? Yeah, Sundays are good for me, generally. Okay. Um, Andra, would the 27th, Monday the 27th, be okay for you? Um, 9 to 10, yeah, I may have a 10 o'clock already. Okay. I have a nine, a standing 9.30. Oh, okay. What if we did like- I think like I'm going to be on an airplane that morning, so I might not be available at all in the morning. Uh, what if we did it later in the day, like at one? Yeah, that works for me. Tom? It, that should work, yes. So if we did one to two, and uh, what about other folks? Adele? I think that's that's fine. Okay. Yeah. Andrew and Darcy. Okay. okay. And Darcy. Yeah. Cool. That's great. Fine. Oh yay. That was easier than I thought it would be. Okay. Great. So we'll do <laughs> Monday the twenty seventh from one to two for our next meeting. And we'll just sort of focus on our next steps with um with the uh, contract edits and with um materials and Hopefully all those things should be edited by then. Great. Thanks. Okay, great. Well, thanks everybody. I'm glad we could do this in an hour. You you have an hour free now that you didn't even know you had. So yay. Yay. <laughs> all thanks, right, Stephanie. Well, have a great thanks, weekend, everyone. everybody. Thanks so much. All right, oh, take care. So long. Bye. Bye. Later. Bye.